Hello, Stephen Jane, Messianics, thanks for coming. Today we're talking about the complete Jewish Bible, which is our um, favorite and exclusively used uh, Bible in our home. Um, and it comes in a, a few different uh, few different sizes and everything. But I wanted to show this to you. Um, I had made a video in about a week, uh, aside from uh, audio Bible, because we've been a little bit sick. Uh, I blew my nose like 30 times and I have a cough drop. We'll see if I can get through this. But I really wanted to share this um, because we love this, this Bible. Uh, this is a special Bible we've been using mostly. King James uh, version, which is, which is okay. Um, it's, a, it's a solid translation. But I think if you're really trying to understand your own faith, uh, we need something that's updated. Um, we went to a church for a while that was King James only. And, uh, you know, they were, they were cool with people using different translations, but there was always something from the pulpit, like, I use my old King James Bible. And let me tell you, when you've got three children sitting there, you're trying to explain to them about legalistic observances of the Torah and what was going on. Uh, it's very difficult to explain to them using a, a 400 year old Bible um, and you're reading out of it and it sounds like you're like a medieval English knight. Well, kids from 2022, they, they, need, they, need, they need better than that. We need to do better, we need to update. Um, this, this, you can read it and uh, it, I, I feel like it's, I'm reading the scripture again for the first time. I really do with new eyes, like from a first century Gentile believer who was lawless and uh, was was thankfully given this gift of faith is a gift. I was delivered out of atheism at the age of 29. And uh, when I read this, I've been reading it only for uh, about a year now. Uh, it's like I'm reading it with a new eyes. Uh, everything that, that the uh, European and Roman theologians and translators stripped out on purpose and all the purposeful um, changes that they made and interpretations, uh, have been taken out and this is more true uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the three books that we have um, I'm going to read the purpose of the complete Jewish Bible I'm going to show you some of the sections that we love there's so much in here uh, I'm going to read a side by side of a couple scriptures um, King James and the complete Jewish Bible which if you're a King James only person you, you need you need and you especially if you have a family or a teacher you, you need to, to listen to that to really appreciate what we have here. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So this is the um, the large print version, complete Jewish Bible. Um, this is great for a lot of reasons. Um, obviously it's bigger print. I don't know if you can even see it. But it's bigger print. There's no, there's no study guides in here, but uh, it does have the sections with uh, the Torah portions and um, as you can see, I put my own little tabs in there. So we have this one. Then we have the regular version. It's not a, it's not a study Bible. I think you can get this for a reasonable price. This is the, the leather bound or faux leather or whatever it is. Um, and it's, it's great. It's just the regular uh, scriptures, the Tanakh and the New Covenant. And then we have uh, my favorite, which is the Study Bible, Complete Jewish Study Bible. And this, I honestly, I, I think it was about fifty dollars. Would recommend this to anybody who loves Yeshua, loves the God of Israel, believes in the Messiah, and just want to grow in your faith and you know learn the truth. Uh, and for us, what what learning the truth was was going back in time to where every finding everything that's Roman, everything that's pagan, and all this. These different theologians that hated the Jews, that, that I think hated the God of Israel, and were very confused. Uh, we, we strip all that down, and we approach it with new eyes. And uh, this, this translation is, is really a great blessing in that respect. Um, the Complete Jewish Bible has um, study guides. You can see that. A lot of study guides. <coughs> and the study guides in here, are, it's interesting. It come, there's, there's some... Uh, entries from or some study. Some of the study guides are from the Talmud. There are rabbis, um, and then there are some that are from even Christian theologians that uh, that that want to believe the truth, that are inclined to um, think for themselves and look at the text um, 
you know, not through like a weird Roman kind of agenda. Um, yeah, here's a, actually that's my favorite one, Torah and the Messiah. There's a lot about the Torah in here. We're gonna we're gonna get to that in a second. But if you want to get your Bibles ready, if you wanted to read along with these scriptures, um, just before I, I get it set, because I'm gonna read the I'm gonna read uh, David Stern's purpose. But it'll be 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and Matthew chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and Matthew chapter 5. Okay. Let me read this. This is from uh, David Stern. Purposes of this version of the Bible. Therefore, I owe it to my readers to state the purposes of the complete Jewish Bible. One. My first purpose is, as I said, to restore the unified Jewishness of the Bible, and particularly to show that the books of the New Covenant are Jewish through and through. Two, the second aim of the complete Jewish Bible is to express the Word of God, Tanakh and Barit Hadashah together, in enjoyable modern English. I want the Bible to be accessible and easy to read, flowing easily from the page into the mind and heart unimpeded as much as possible by the differences between the environment of the Bible and that of the present. Three, my third purpose is to make the CJB, Complete Jewish Bible, fully usable in a Messianic synagogue, where the Barit Hadashah, New Testament, New Covenant, would be read in the service along with the Torah and the Prophets. Uh, the CJB can be used to follow the readings in a non-Messianic synagogue as well. And finally, I am supplying at last what my fans have been asking me for, a single volume containing my version of the in entire Bible. Uh, let's see. And then and it goes on to talk quite a bit more. <laughs> but that's, that's, that was his, uh, his purpose. And I love that. I love it. I, I honestly, this, like I said, reading this is like reading the, the scriptures for the first time. And when I show, show the side by side reading of, uh, first Corinthians, and also uh, Matthew chapter 5 of Yeshua's words, you'll really get to see this. Because if you're reading it through this other lens, you really could see it as if, uh, you know, Judaism um, became a separate religion after Yeshua was resurrected. Or you could really look at it and believe that, you know, after Yeshua was resurrected, he was no longer a, a Jew who went to synagogue, who read from the scrolls, who knew all the prayers, who followed the schedule and all the appointed holy days, you could easily think that he just did away with that. I mean, you've heard of that. He did away with the law. That's like the height of ignorance. And that's what we need to combat um, as believers, messianic believers. But you could really see how someone could look through the King James Bible, read it, and uh, come up with this, or look at some of the theologians uh, from Rome or even Martin Luther, some of these other people, you could see that Judaism is like a separate religion and Christianity was born. But this is actually not true at all. Um, but that's a whole other another thing. Just remember this. This is the key point. Yeshua himself, none of the disciples or apostles, Shaul, Paul, uh, he didn't become Paul when he had his vision. He was always Shaul. That's like another thing. Um, he wasn't Shaul and then he was Paul. All of these people... Uh, never changed anything about how they practiced uh, their Judaism. Yeshua didn't wash off his Judaism in the Jordan River uh, when he was immersed. Just remember that. There was no difference. Uh, the Messianic synagogues met, house churches, they taught the Torah, holy appointed times, until the Romans came in. And that's when that all ended. And then here we go. Then we get all these different uh, versions of the Bible and stuff like that. So I read the purpose. And I'm going to show you some of the sections. This is this. I, I just love this. Here's a, and the, here's a section where they show different prophecies. They show, oh, you can't see with my notepad, my note thing there. But you could see the, the prophecies. He lists all these different prophecies, all the scriptures, you could find them. Imagine that. If you really love the Lord, you could, and you could sit down for an afternoon and just go through this. It's, it's, uh, I loved it. When I first saw I could I held this in my arms. Like a baby. Here's the festivals, the feasts and fasts, scripture readings. Look at that, huh? I mean that's awesome. So when we celebrated Sukkot for the first time 
as a Messianic Jewish family. Just in October, we, uh, we went through here and we read all the scripture readings associated with Sukkot, right along with all the Jewish people in Israel, all the uh, Messianic synagogues, everybody. We were on the, we read, we read right along with them. Here's the uh, Shabbat scripture readings. It has everything. Yeah, it has everything you need to read from the Torah portion, the Haftarah from the prophets, and from the Brit Hadashah, New Covenant. See that? <laughs> yeah. Really, really amazing. <clears throat> so, for someone who, someone who like me, who was not raised with any kind of religious beliefs, uh, total lawlessness, um, pretty dysfunctional upbringing, you know, and then came to faith at age 29, and we were, um, you know, we bounced around a few different churches, some really good people, really faithful people. I, I really want to urge people to use kind language when talking about people that are unfortunately enslaved to Roman interpretation of uh, our Messiah that's stripped everything meaningful and Jewishness out. Now we just have the seed that's Jesus. And remember Jesus, the name Jesus Christ is valid. Uh, you could see by evidence by how Hollywood and the enemy makes fun of it. But there is no real connection to our Messiah. See, the name Yeshua HaMashiach means, Yeshua means salvation. When the angel came, he didn't say, hey, you're going to call him Jesus. Like you read in the Bible, it says, hey, you'll call him Jesus in Luke. But he said, no, you'll call him Yeshua or Emmanuel and God with us. And you will call him, Yeshua. his name will be Yeshua, which means salvation. So when you say Yeshua, that's actually what he said, what his mom and dad said, and what his brothers and sisters called him. Uh, Jesus Christ is uh, something that came later, and it doesn't have that same meaning. You know, I'm okay with either one, but I just, it's important. You know, meanings, meanings uh, of names are important. And, and when you use the Hebrew name, Yeshua, which I do from now on, I will, uh, and with no objection to Jesus, remember that. It has a, it has a meaning. And so when you, when you, when you, ah, throw my notes. When you read this version of the Bible, which is much, much closer to the real meaning of the gospel. Uh, it'll blow your mind. I, I feel like I um, have just been coming to faith, sincere faith in the Messiah Yeshua in the last few months. I believe I've been saved, but there was something wrong there. So now this is, this is where it gets good. <coughs> Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And this is, this is really where it shines, stuff like this. That I'm actually going to do a video where it's a side-by-side -side with the uh, complete Jewish Bible and the King James Bible. I'm going to do a bunch of scriptures. I'm just going to read them off so you can see how somebody could pick up a Bible, like a King James Bible, and read it and just be like, what am I even reading? Like, what does this even say? That's a lot of these scriptures, it's really like that. And you can imagine now, I'm not an educated person or well-educated, but you can imagine like a kid or somebody who, you know, maybe didn't have the, the best background, like, in, you know, wasn't able to concentrate in school, not the best reader, you know. You can imagine them trying to read this uh, King James Bible. You know, to them, it sounds like a medieval English knight trying to explain something modern. It's, it's, it's really crazy. Um, it's time. It's time, and the complete Jewish Bible really gives us what we need. So here we go, 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read it from the... Com here, I'll read it from the King James Bible first, and then I'll read it from the complete Jewish Bible. And you can imagine listening to this for the first time. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. Verse 19. I am not in 1 Corinthians. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 9, 19. For though I am free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So, 
You can imagine being a child or being somebody, even even an adult trying to explain that to somebody. So let's look at it in the in the complete Jewish Bible. How how it really is, what it means. For although I am a free man, not bound to do anyone's bidding, I have made myself a slave in order to win as many people as possible. That is, with Jews, what I did was put myself in the position of a Jew in order to win Jews. With people in subject, this is it, listen. With people in subjection to a legalistic perversion of the Torah, I put myself in position of someone under such legalism in order to win those under this legalism, even though I myself am not in subjection to a legalistic perversion of the Torah. With those who live outside the framework of Torah, I put myself in the position of someone outside the Torah in order to win those outside the Torah, although I myself am not outside the framework of God's Torah, but within the framework of Torah as upheld by the Messiah. <laughs> so, simple as that, you know. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. I try not to be bothered by this. Chapter 5, verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. I got my bagpipes going. I learned uh, not long ago that I'm 30% Scottish. I was always told I was English and, or no, German and Irish. But I'm actually 30% Scottish. I'm going to embrace that, baby. All right. Five. Verse 17. Listen to this. This is the words of our Savior. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's read it, let's read it like a normal person and not like a medieval English knight. And not with an anti-Jewish uh, translators. Don't think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to complete. That's telos. It's to complete. It's not to end. They, they, they never use that to end. It always is good and to complete. Um, yes, indeed. I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not so much as a yud or a stroke will pass from the Torah. Not a little mark. Not until everything that must happen has happened. And that's... And that's not the resurrection. He's not saying that the Torah is good until I'm resurrected and then it's done. That's not what he, what he meant. It's not. So whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot commands and teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness is far greater than that of the Torah teachers and yeah, Torah Shim. So you can see, Yeshua was here. Uh, he was friendly with the Pharisees. He hung out with mostly with them. Um, he did criticize them. Um, but they were the main people that he was talking to and that were listening to him. Uh, they believed in the resurrection. They believed in the afterlife. They believed in the angels. Uh, everything Yeshua said um, was, uh, was in line with, with, with mostly what they said. But, but they legalistically interpreted it. Uh, and they perverted it. He was against that. He came, he, he came to lead people away from the legalistic observance of the Torah and into the right observance of the Torah. And that was supposed to continue in the Messianic community until Rome came in and just murdered everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but when you look into that, if you just, I'm going to do another video on that too. I've been doing some research. It might, I might not even be able to read everything out loud that I found. <laughs> It's that bad. But so why why we love it, right? Why do we love the complete Jewish Bible? Number one, it's easy to understand. Okay? Under the law, not under the law. It's Torah. It's a Torah. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Torah is not a dirty word. Okay? Uh, this is much more understandable. Uh, kids understand it better. You know, you can imagine. We, we went through a few comparisons with our kids. And it was, it was like a medieval English night reading. 
something, you know, off a scroll, and the, and they would just be like, they would just be looking at us like, what? Yeah, James, like what? <coughs> the kind of a cold. If you heard any of our audio stuff, it was audio Bible stuff. It was getting hoarse. That's why I haven't made a video in a week. Uh, and then, it's true to the historical roots. It's true to the historical roots. You know where it, it says Torah. It says legalistic observance of Torah. Uh, it's it's just it's it's how it's meant to be. There's a lot of history here with the Bible, and uh, you know pe people always feel judged and attacked. Everybody, I, I I I you could read one person ranting about how the King James Bible is the only Bible you should ever use. And then you could read someone else, you know, who is critiquing that. And I mean, everybody has their own thing. But let me tell you, this has blessed us tremendously. This has just been awesome for us. We, we got all three. The, the only place I've seen where you can get it is christianbook.com. Uh, you might be able to find it at, through Messianic Jewish Publishers. I'm not sure what the shipping would be or how they do it. They might sell it through christianbook.com. I'm not sure. But the uh, study Bible is about $50. I think the regular Bible is maybe like 35, 40. <coughs> and then the, uh, the large print one, I think, I, I think we paid like $70 for this one and it was worth it. So this one, uh, you can have two people sitting next to each other or three people looking at it. And we've, we've had that uh, with our kids. So yeah, so anyway, I don't want to keep you all. I just wanted to share with you the complete Jewish Bible. We love this Bible. Um, and I would encourage all of you not to throw away, you know, King James Bibles or anything, but our King James Bible, when we got this, when we got this King James Bible, I mean, when we got this complete Jewish Bible, uh, our King James Bible has been collecting dust. It's been sitting on the on the shelf. Same with the NIV, and, and we have this one, which my dad gave me, which is awesome. My dad gave me this as a present. So side by side, you could really, really get into the differences. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So thanks, I'm glad I didn't go uh, hoarse or cough through this one. But check out Complete Jewish Bible. Check out David Stern. Check out Messianic Jewish Publishers. And uh, follow the truth. If you are not engaged in, a, in an honest, sincere pursuit of the truth, then your faith is in yourself and it's not in, in, in our Messiah. Because our Messiah, left and right, he told his disciples, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be easy. Like Ray Comfort said, he didn't he didn't promise you a, a an easy flight. He he, he uh, promised you a safe landing. And what we labor for in this world and in this life leads to the next. It's just a dressing room for eternity. Uh, so be truthful to yourself. Examine yourself, and make sure that what you believe about the Messiah is true. So I encourage all of you to get the complete Jewish Bible, the complete Jewish Study Bible, definitely. Um, I didn't include any links. I'm not trying to make any money. I'm not any kind of great teacher. I don't have any special titles like prophet or magician or, um, you know, whatever, special tongue speaker and none of that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm just a dad who loves my family and is trying to lead a Messianic Jewish family. This Bible right here has been a major blessing, uh, an overwhelming blessing that just keeps on giving. Complete Jewish Bible. Go get yourself one. Thanks for sitting with me through this. If you made it all the way to this point, you have the patience of the Lord. So God bless you. I have dad jokes, so I'll just give you a couple. Knock, knock. Alex. I'll explain everything when you open up the door. Knock, knock. Jamaican. Jamaican the crazy, man. <laughs> all right, that's enough out of me. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. May the blessings of the Messiah Yeshua rest on your household. Peace be on your house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. And no turning back. No turning back. So God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Keep the faith. Fight the good fight. Don't ever back down. And you Messianic people who have been cast out, who have been mistreated because you're following the holy days, looking to the Torah, understanding the Jewishness of this, of this word that he's given us, you're not alone. You're not alone out there. There are so many people rising up and grabbing the truth and not turning away from it and sharing it boldly 
and, and, and we're, we're the remnant and God is, is bringing us all together and uh, so let's get, let's get to New Jerusalem New Jerusalem and let's get there together so God bless you thanks for joining me and that's enough out of me hmm.